Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. All right, this is Attican, and welcome to part two of our replay of the Northern Passage. We are using our pass-through rural station technique. We've already connected one, two, three, four, five, six. We've already connected seven cities to our network, and we have hit that 800K uh, quarterly profit goal, which is the hardest one on this one. And um, we're right now we're working and working on growing Gardner up to 60,000 so we can put the Yellowstone office in Gardner and that will finish off all our first set of uh, tasks. And we've already just in just by grow naturally growing our network, we have already completed uh, some of our uh, future tasks as well. So we're we're in good shape, it seems. And uh, right now we're just trying to find ways to get growth into Gardner. So uh, we want we want to uh, do whatever we can to get get growth in Gardner. So this is a mild departure from our pass through. We've we followed the pass through um, rural station religiously up to this point, uh, but now because we want to focus on that growth in one city, we are uh, running a special little line here. Um, to get to get some uh, uh, additional goods in the gardener. And here we're using our, our kind of our flat uh, crossing approach. And you can see it's a little it's a little clumsy when you want to have double tracks crossing double tracks. It, uh, it's a little less than ideal, but, but you can make it work, but it, it, it gives you that ugly little separation there, it, 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 but uh, that's okay. So now we're going to run uh, corn uh, directly to Gardner, so this will not be a, a pass-through technically. Now we could, of course, go ahead and make it one. We could run Gardner to Nampa, which is over there to the left of our screen out to the west if we wanted to, but right now we're just uh, focusing on getting goods in the gardener to keep it growing. And we're not seeing enough meat coming out of Billings coming over. And the one thing I would say about the pass-through warehouse uh, or the pass-through rural station that really works to get your strong economy because you, you really are running full trains. But you don't always get the goods shipped the way you want to. So there I'm going to run one that's an automatic train, but I'm going to prioritize um, meat to make sure I can get meat going over to Gardner on that, on that one train. So every time it loads it from billing, it's going to grab any meat that's, that it has that it can take to uh, Gardner. And we really... I, it's disappointing. There, there's where the pass through, you know, it's got its cons. Um, there should be no problem getting meat to Gardner because it's hooked up with Billings on one side, Idaho Falls on the other side. Both of those are meat, so we got meat beer going from two different directions into the the beer in uh, Gardner, and meat should not be a problem, but and yet it is. So that means that our pass through. Warehouse is getting too loaded down, or past, sorry, pass through rural station is getting too loaded down with um, passengers and mail, and it's not um, not quite cutting the mustard on getting that um, meat in, into Gardner. And so if we're going to continue to use this method, then we're going to have to figure out a way, perhaps through setting priorities, to make sure that that is not a problem, to make sure that we can then get those uh, goods moving and make sure that we can get the goods from the um, central rural station, whatever that happens to be, whether it's wheat or, or cattle or whatever, we need to make sure um, that we're that we're getting what we need shipped so that this is going to take some tweaking to really make it efficient uh, right now the thing that's great about it is it's just such a strong way to start your economy 
because again, uh, you know, the thing I've I've said multiple times, the full trains, when you're running these full trains, your economy gets very strong, very fast. That's the great side. The, the downside is that you kind of lose that beautiful control over your city growth that you have with like a pass-through warehouse, for example, which is just lovely. You know what's going to the cities. You know the cities are getting what you need. And we may have to look at thinking about combinations of dedicated lines, but removing uh, between the cities and the pass-through rural stations. I, I, you know, I don't know the answer yet. That's what I'm trying to say. But. Um, uh, you know, again, if, if it was, we continue to go through this one, you'll see how beautifully it works, but we're also starting to see some of the places where we need to do a little tweaking and some optimization to really make it work. So again, we're, we're at this point focusing on growth with um, Gardner, and there's fruit up there that Gardner can use. So we're going to set up another pass through rural station through that fruit with Great Falls up there, which is a, uh, a meat producer to the north, uh, which will give us uh, three beer meat lines running into uh, Gardner. So once again, while we're getting city growth in Gardner, it's not good enough. We could do, be doing a better job uh, of growing Gardner. It should already be at 60,000, in, in my opinion, uh, based on what we've got connected up with it. And that being said, um, uh, again, we need to do some tweaking on this method or figure out what we need to do, what we need to keep out of it and what we need to alter. But I don't want to sound negative about it because because this is this is going to be the third um, fairly difficult scenario that I've played through with using that method almost religiously. And uh, sorry about the um, uh, spoiler alert, but we're going to get a really high score on this one too. So um, you know, obviously it works. It works beautifully. But uh, again, it could be even better. And and we're going to figure out how do we make it even better.
So I did all that searching around. I was just looking for Kingman because one of our future tasks is to hook up uh, Mile City, our headquarters, and Kingman, which is way down in the, on this map, southwest corner of the map. And uh, just looking ahead to see how we're going to get that done. Now Gardner's getting good growth. It's over 70% satisfaction because we're shipping all that stuff in there directly. So it won't be long until we can put in the um, Yellowstone office and have that task done. And that's our next task that needs to get done. So we want to do that one as quickly as we can. So I'm kind of waiting on that growth and thinking ahead to what kind of trouble do we want to get into next after we get that office built. So there you can see it's a 59.5. So just to just be just a moment until we can put hit that 60 uh, level city level four rating. It's a 60,000 population and um, and put in our special building. There we go. And there it is down on the bottom of the list, and we will put that out there out of the way in Gardner and get that task completed. So now we've actually got our first five, because we've already, we've just, the 10,000 passengers sounds like a lot of passengers, but, but just by setting up all these connections, I mean, look at all the city. We've got like eight cities connected to our network. So just by having that, those cities connected, it, um, tells us, you know, it gives us uh, all those passengers. The other thing we need to do here is buy Beatrix eventually. And that's, um, that could be a bit of a challenge. She's uh, expanding quite a bit down here to the south. You can see she's got lines all over the place. So she's doing a pretty good job and got a pretty, pretty profitable company. So we're going to have a, uh, you know, have to work to, to buy her out, but of course we're going to grow faster than she is, which means that eventually we can overtake her and purchase her. So now I'm looking at, we have a lot, we have a requirement to get an express train. And typically uh, I don't put much emphasis on the trains in research. I mean, there are trains you like to have, and if you don't have a freight train and you've got a lot of mountains, you're going to need a freight train, uh, you know, a locomotive that can haul freight. Uh, if you have to have, but in this case, we need express lines. It's, we have to have five, op, five express lines operating at the same time. And to do that, we're going to have to have the fastest train out there. And uh, so we're going to have to focus our research on getting over to get a faster train. And what I really decided to do is to go ideal. The American, which is the first train you get from the next set, this is we're in 18, the 1870 to 1890. The first train you get in the 1890s is the uh, NYC American, which is a very fast train and it's designed to be an express train. So we're going to actually target our research to get all the way out there to the end to get that train so that we can make sure we get express trains uh, on, our, on some of our lines. But right now we're just going to hook up another pass-through rural station through the wheat and run that over to yet another city in our, in our network so we can add another city into what's becoming a pretty large uh, network here. And we're going to grab that city down there. Uh, I think it's Missoula. Is that what that is? Yeah, so we're going to grab Missoula and hook it up through the Queet into Spokane. So that'll be a really another good profitable line for us, hauling passengers, mail, wheat, beer, uh, all kinds of nice stuff for us. to avoid that Indian village. Although I did see, I don't usually pay attention to those like steam achievements or whatever, but there is one for relocating an Indian village. One of these times I'm just going to have to intentionally uh, go right through one and pay the price for relocating them just to uh, just to click that off the list. But I, I, I really don't pay attention to those achievements. But um, if I did, that's certainly what I'd do. In fact, this I thought I actually thought the reason I'm mentioning it is I actually thought about it here. I thought about just going right through that village and and uh, and relocating them. 
because we've got a good economy now we can afford to do it So I'm going to keep running the Baldwin for the time being for these lines, particularly these lines that aren't really, this, these will never become express lines because they're going to be hauling a lot of freight. Well, they, 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 they could become an express line, but it's highly unlikely. And we're not really worried about them being express lines, we're just worried about them being profitable lines. And here we have an opportunity to run a couple of trains through the veggies uh, in both directions and, and be able to deliver the vegetables and take advantage of that same track, which is a little, um, little detour, if you will, over here to the veggie station. So we'll get that set up, run a couple of trains on that, and then we'll have uh, vegetables and wheat. Now the vegetables, won't be used possibly ever, actually. Uh, they, the cities may not grow enough to use them, but, they, but if they do, they certainly can. And even at worst, worst case, we've, you know, built a station we didn't need and a little bit of track we didn't need, but uh, we'll just run a couple of trains through there, and the worst cases, they'll just uh, go through and, and deliver, um, you know, passengers' mail and goods like they always would. So I'm really, at this point, focusing on just growing the company, if you will. So just continuing to use the same technique, because I really want to test the technique. But the goal is just keep expanding our network and keep expanding our business so that we can get bigger and bigger, growing faster and faster, and overtake Beatrix. That's the biggest thing, really, I'm thinking about is how do we overtake Beatrix? And then we do that, of course, by outgrowing her, by having more stuff growing faster, running more efficient lines, making more money on our train so that we're, our company value starts outpacing hers and once it gets up to like a two for one where we're twice as big as she is roughly, then it becomes a fairly easy matter to purchase her. Still, you still have to work at it, you just have to accumulate the cash, but uh, it can be done at that point. And we gotta haul all that freight too, so we go on and we've got, a quarterly revenue goal of transporting mail. And you've noticed I haven't done anything to, to accent or, or worry about mail. I mean, that's a big number for mail. And as I recall, the last time I did this, I really focused on the mail because I was concerned about getting it. This time I just let the system kind of, our method we're using, take care of it itself. So here I am thinking, okay, here's an easy way to go to Kingman. The connecting Miles City to Kingman doesn't mean that there has to be a line between Miles City and Kingman. It just means that Miles City, which is of course on our network because it's, it's um, our headquarters, and then Kingman, all we have to do is put Kingman on our network. So if, if Kingman is on our network, if it's attached to the rest of our network, then uh, in effect, Miles City and Kingman are attached. And so now, once we have this line running up here, we'll go past Elko up to our city, up to Nampa, and hook in a line between Kingman and Nampa. And once that line is connected, we have in effect connected Mile City and Kingman. And any, and any passengers who wanted to go if you're a passenger in, in Miles City and you wanted to go to Kingman, you could ride our trains all the way there. You would just need to transfer at X number of cities. You would transfer in billings, transfer in 
uh, Gardner, transfer in Idaho Falls, transfer in Nampa, and next thing you know, you'd, <laughs> several years later, you would be in uh, Kingman. By that time, you may have forgotten why you were going to Kingman in the first place, but still, you would be there. And that's going to take a lot of money, so let's just open a couple of bonds and have the money to do this right and build both sides of that track. And there we go. There's a task completed. We have hooked up Kingman. So, of course, we're going to double track it back, and you can guess here we're going to look at express lines. So we're going to run passengers and mail here in the hopes of eventually having an express line. We will not get it right away, reason being we don't have the fastest train. You know, we've got, remember Beatrix is out there. I'm not, you know, we don't know for sure what she's running, but she's, they, uh, the uh, computer AI tends to run fast tra fastest trains they can get. And um, so, we're going to need to get our research out there and get that American or some other. Maybe along the way we'll pick up something else that will be fast enough. But the real thought is let's get the American and um, target our research toward that. Because it will take us time to buy Beatrix. Uh, to, to accumulate the cash and buy her out will take some time. And so, we, so we're just going to keep far targeting our research on the American to get our, our express lanes, but we're going to set this up right away. Plus, you can make really good money on these long lines when you run these passenger and mail lines. Uh, they, they can make really good money on these big long lines uh, where you can do passenger and mail, where you get faster delivery. We're running the Enyo, which is the fastest train we have available to us. So these lines will do well, even though these are two not terribly large cities and we don't really have anything set up down there on Kingman to help it grow. But just the same, we should get good traffic and then all those people from down south who want to go anywhere on our network, of course, are going to use this line to get up to Nampa to transfer to go to all these other cities on our network. So by doing this as a passenger and mail line, even though it's not going to get huge traffic, it's still we're still going to be able to charge good um, prices and make good money on it. And hopefully at some point get express lines out of it. And since it's such a long line, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about maintenance and I'm actually now going through that uh, phase of starting to put maintenance on the buildings. It's time. We've got our economy is strong now. We're making good money. We don't have a specific task in front of us right now other than just, you know, shipping a lot of uh, freight, which will just happen naturally. Uh, so it's time to uh, go in and get this maintenance going so that our trains aren't breaking down all over the place. So here's where we can get, a, we have our choice of a couple of station masters. And so that, those are great. They give you a quicker turnaround in your stations, either reducing the maintenance or increasing your turnaround time. Either way, you get those trains in and out of your station faster. That's any of those office personnel you want when you can get them, for the most part. Occasionally, you'll get one that helps you build better tunnels or something like that, and that is not 
terribly useful, but all the rest of them can be very helpful. So now at this point, we have really got this thing kind of nailed. Now it's now it's a matter of continuing to to grow and starting to chase down Beatrix. And uh, that gets a little boring to be honest with you. So I, I'm going to actually fast forward this one. Um, if I think of something else that's really good here, uh, I will stop and show it to you. But but basically at this point, we have, the 800K is the hard one. I, that's the one I really wanted to show was how do you get that 800K so quickly? And then, of course, here are the differences. We're a, a diversion from what we usually do is we're going to target uh, faster trains so that we can get our express lines because we know we need those as a, as an optional task. It's really an optional task, but I, of course, I want to get all the tasks done. And our quarterly revenue on mail is literally going to come just from continuing to grow. Buying Beatrix, as I said, is just a matter of time. We have to just outgrow her. And so really the rest of this, the rest of this mission is just a huge exercise in building, building, building. And it really is just keeps, I just keep doing the same thing. I'll tell you, I just keep doing pass through uh, rural stations from cities to cities, anywhere I can find them, anywhere I can find um, usable um, uh, raw materials. I go grab it, connect up cities, uh, start invading Beatrice's turf and, you know, connecting up her cities as well. But I just keep going after that on and on and on relentlessly until we get it done. So it's really kind of a slugging through exercise at this point. And here I do, I will show you, here's my the little sleazy trick with the connections. The first sleaze, of course, is to just take that connection. So you just grab it, you take the connection, you get the bonus. There we go. Now, here's the really sleazy part. You hit the bulldozer and you destroy what you just connected, getting refunds for the money you just spent. And now you're, you've got all kinds of money. And as I said in another video, that bonus connection will actually reappear and you can do that process again. That's, that's, that's about as sleazy as I, I would ever want to get right there, but uh, it, it does work. All right, so let's cut this one off. I'm going to fast forward it all the way out to the end, and we'll see how we did.
All right, so we're not quite at the end, but we've now done all our research to get that American. You saw it set a speed record for us. So we should be seeing our express lines popping up here soon. And we've got that long line going from Kingman all the way up to Nampa, where we expect express trains. We've also, uh, we're going to set up a line between, um, there's a connection, uh, express bonus connection between Gardner and Salt Lake City. It's two large cities. And so we're going to go ahead and set up an, another line there to run express trains or passenger mail trains. Uh, between Gardner and Salt Lake City so we can get express trains there as well. So we are very, very close to the end here now. And you'll, if you were kind of watching that fast forward part, I, I just kept building and building and building and building. And, and the reason I'm not showing you is because it's just the same building over and over again. And I just built uh, anywhere I could find, you know, two cities to connect with, a, with some good to pass through, I, I did it. That, that was the, no real rhyme or reason, no great strategy, no special techniques. That's why I'm not showing it. It's just uh, same old, same old. And now we're going to set up this line between Gardner and um, Salt Lake City. Remember, we already have a pass-through line. We already have a line going through the wheat between the two cities. So now this is going to be another line that's going to be dedicated to passengers. And this will serve two prior purposes. It will give us, it should give us express lines on the passengers, and it will give us um, an improvement on our pass-through line because those cities are getting pretty large and it's hard to haul enough uh, wheat when you have two large cities because they generate so much uh, passenger mail traffic. But this new line will take uh, the pressure off that and actually will make uh, the other line better. So, and this, by the way, could be part of our solution for how do we really optimize this approach is to, uh, you know, start doing a better job of putting in uh, passenger lines. Because that's something, you know, if you watch a lot of my videos, that's not something I typically emphasize are, are passenger lines. And uh, it's probably to my... Um, uh, I would say it's to my fault or to, to my shame that I don't do that because, uh, you know, it's good money and I should probably should be running more passenger lines. But I tend to be more freight centric because my approach is more uh, rapid expansion and, um, and city building. And that, that implies to me the way this game mechanic, the way this, this game's mechanics work, that says haul freight between the cities. Now right here, we can't quite fit in there with two lanes, so we're actually gonna tie it off up here and then have a piece of single track that runs in that little narrow gap between our other station, our pass-through station, and the uh, wheat farm. Um, but that should not be an issue. They'll, they should be able to get through. They'll spread out and run through there very quickly and easily. And again, this is our passenger line that we're setting up. So now we've got our American, we're going to get our express lines, we've, uh, we're, we've expanded and expanded and expanded. Uh, you, the, our money is starting to grow rapidly. I'm actually even setting this one up with uh, two ends on it so that um, we can use both platforms if we want to, to set up our line. No, I did that and then didn't even use it, so it didn't even matter to me. And that'll be a really good one because that's got three happy employees on it. That, that'll be a great line right there. And by the way, I actually, in fact, updated every train to the American because if you look at the stats on them, because the American is kind of next generation, even though it's an express train, it's a really a better freight train than the freight trains we have available to us in the um, period uh, because we're not doing any of the heavy lifting. We're not hauling goods over top of a mountain with 18 degree inclines anywhere. We're just running pretty straightforward lines here with not, without any 
giant inclines. There's certainly some inclines in here, but nothing huge. And so these Americans can handle that easily, in fact, better than, uh, you know, our so-called freight trains that we have from, from, you know, older set of trains. So here you can see all we've got left here is get our express trains, finish off that quarterly revenue on, on uh, mail, which we're getting close to, gaining on it rapidly, and buying out Beatrix. So we're just almost there on the quarterly mail. In fact, this one express line here will probably get us over the over the top on that, or this one passenger mail line, even if it isn't express, will probably get us over the top on that. And you can see there's good mail being carried right there on that train we're seeing. So let's go ahead and fast forward this to the end and see how we how we finish up. Because again, just the sheer volume of connections that we have gives us our mail volume. So now we're ready to, to buy out those last few shares of Beatrix's company and uh, finish it off. There we go. And we'll merge with Beatrix and end the scenario. Let's see how we did. So we got 10 out of 10 task and a 19.6 out of 20 oh, grown uh, on our um, time. But at any rate, we can see that the uh, pass through rural station certainly worked. Hopefully uh, some of you who are struggling with uh, this scenario can uh, pick up a few things from what we've seen here and apply it to your game and beat this scenario. I hope you enjoyed this, I hope it'll help you become a better player, and I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.